Ciao Juventino of the world, welcome back on the channel. My name is Giuseppe and I'm super, super happy to have Mo, Mohamed El Chahali, where uh, I call him El Tactico from uh, last episode. He will be there with us to explain us if Juventus in the final is able to beat Napoli and becoming actually the winner of the Coppa Italia. We have some slides to show you. Mo did a great work in analyzing the weaknesses and the strength of, um, of Napoli. So let's start. But before that, Mo, do you want to say hello? Yeah. So hello, everyone. This is uh, Mo. I'm glad to be here again. So let's start, uh, Giuseppe. We start immediately, maybe before going to tactics. We go and yeah. we see the last updated lineups. Is that okay yeah. for you? Yeah, of course. So we start with the lineups. Who do we have? Perfect. So again, we have Buffon because it's Coppa Italia. And I think it's going to be a record or very soon to beating a record. So this is really interesting. Uh, in defense, it's the same lineup except for Cuadrado. Uh, Quadrado is there, but again, we're going to see tomorrow if it's Quadrado or Danilo. Midfield, it's exactly the same. And also the forward, we have Douglas Costa, Dybala and Cristiano Ronaldo. So it, it will be really interesting to see if they can play like the first 30 minutes uh, against Milan. So we have no changes here, Mo. Yeah. So the only change is Quadrado, as I said. And... Ramsey is going to be on the bench, so this is really interesting. It's not sure if he's going to play or not. Uh, the other three injured, Chiellini, uh, ben, um, sorry, it was Demiral and Higuain will yeah. train separately, uh, and then they will join tomorrow. But That's they will strange. be in the stands. Yeah. Before commenting too much, let me uh, show you the Napoli lineup. Yeah. So Napoli, the biggest uh, miss here for them, it's going to be Ospina. He was great against Inter. Now it's Meret. It's a goalkeeper that I like. He's really talented, but uh, I think he's not getting his chance. Uh, defense is almost the same. Mario Rui is uh, instead of Hisai. And uh, we're going to see Mario Ruiz as well from, from the first minute. So this is interesting. And attack is the same as against Inter Milan. Okay. Before before your uh, opinion, uh, because uh, I love to have your opinion also. So before giving me your opinion about if we have yes or no the right formation actually to uh, to face Inter, uh, sorry Napoli, uh, because actually uh, uh, Inter was eliminated by Napoli. But before telling me that, let's see the strength of Napoli and then the weaknesses. And at the end, tell me if you think that the lineup, the predicted lineup, uh, uh, is the correct one. Is that fine? Yeah, absolutely. So g let me go through the, the first uh, images. So Yeah. So this was an action uh, against Inter. Uh, Inter Milan had a shot there. And yeah. Ospina caught the ball. And the first thing he did, he shot really far the ball towards uh, Insigne. Yeah. Yeah. Let me open the second image. So, sorry for the people that are watching. I always have to close the image and go to the second one. So, I'm sorry for that. Uh, but that's the second one. Yeah. So, you can see it reached Insigne. Insigne is super fast. Uh, you have Mertens from the other side as well. The defenders were not ready. They're trying to, to catch up with Insigne. So, uh, this is a really interesting... Uh, Attack a counter attack. It's the typical counter attack of Napoli. I will I will show immediately the third one, the third picture that you sent me. So here the biggest mistake is that you see the two inter defenders. They're going towards Insigne. Yeah. And even Handanovic is focused on Insigne, but Insigne is very smart and he knows well how to play with. Mertens. He knows that Mertens is running the other side and he's coming. And there you go. He passes the ball to Mertens and Mertens scores. So this is okay. a typical uh, counter-attack by Napoli. If it's not Mertens, it's Callejon. These three, they're really fast uh, and and they're really dangerous on, on counter. So this is something that De Ligt and Bonucci have to watch out. And also... 
if Quadrado is going up, this could be very dangerous. Absolutely. We tend to attack a lot from, from the left side. So that's something that we really have to pay attention with because I know that if we analyze the the, the sorry ball and the way we play it, we give a lot of feel to, to the opponents. So we have to pay attention to the counter attacks. If we play with, you know, like Sari asked to, to, to step up uh, with the defenders also as high as possible to press, we can we can have problems. So that's why I believe, but then we will see the weaknesses. But I believe it can be an idea to play uh, uh, Quadrado, um, sorry, Danilo in the back, who is a bit more defensive as Quadrado, especially because Quadrado is great in the back. I love him this season, but he has a problem with one-to-one -one play. So that can be dangerous with a player like Insigne, who's fast and, and quick there. I don't know if you agree. I agree. I, uh, I agree, absolutely. Uh, Quadrado also tends to go a lot up front. He likes to uh, uh, dribble and cross and provide support. So that leaves a lot of space behind him. And this is where Insigne could... Uh, try and run and get into those spaces. Uh, Before going to the weaknesses more, you want to go to the, uh, because you talked about Insigne, you want mm -hmm. to go to some specificalities from Insigne? Sure, we can look at Insigne. He's, uh, to me, the most dangerous player. Uh, as you can see, he's very technical, very fast. He's short, that's true, so uh he's he's not good with his head and all that but going from the left side he's very dangerous and he scores really nice goals as well so uh, the figure in the middle as you can see it's basically the light green is his abilities and the dark green it's someone in his position an average player how uh would be run in that position so here you can see that he's above average uh, as a left wing, and he, he has a, a magic right foot, a bit like uh, you know we said at the time, Ala Del Piero. Yeah. He's one of the players who loves to score a bit like that, you know. The, yes, uh, the, Ala Del Piero. That's a, that's a dangerous one. We have. I, I agree with you. That's a player to to pay attention with. Why did you choose uh, Insigne over Mertens as a player to to watch? Because Insigne is the one who's going to create uh, the danger. Mertens can score for sure, but Insigne, if you don't catch him from the beginning, then that's it. For and sure. you also identified uh, some weaknesses from Napoli. Can we go through those ones? Absolutely. So, so here, actually, before, before saying what's a weakness of Napoli, I'm just going to say that Koulibaly is one of the best defenders we have in Serie A. So this is really important. But look where he is right now. He's trying to man-mark Lukaku. Yeah. And Lukaku was smart enough to just drag, the, drag Koulibaly outside and pass the ball. And you can see on both sides, there it's empty. Yeah. And inter players are just running there. So you see that uh, Mario, uh, it was, uh, sorry, it was Hisai. Hisai is trying to catch up. Uh, you see from the other side, the two defenders, they're also watching only one defender and leaving the left side completely open. And this is where uh, into, uh, sorry, Napoli struggles a lot. It's basically when you're attacking from the side. Yeah. So now that the pass went um, to Candreva. You have two defenders also in the center. They still didn't catch up. Koulibaly is trying as fast as possible to, to go back, but it was too late. Yeah. You have four against two. So this is this is the biggest problem of Napoli. And this is where we need basically someone like Cristiano Ronaldo to drag Koulibaly out and do quick passes and then hit them on the side. That's actually a really, really nice one. So actually one of the plan, if I recap and understand what you are saying is, trying with Dybala or Ronaldo to attract Koulibaly as far possible from his zone because that creates spaces from Douglas Costa, for example, if he's playing, or Cuadrado, depending who's playing there. 
to go yeah. there and uh, from from the flank. It's a good it's a good one, good catch. I love it. And then I will uh, show you again the same picture we started with because yeah. now we have the great question. It's fine to analyze uh, uh, Napoli to understand it, but the big question. And I will open my picture. It's always a bit tricky, but let's open it again. Okay, I have it here. So give me one second. Here we are. Is that is that the right formation to play against uh, or to start? I will say to start against Napoli. Yeah, so for me, 4-3-3 is, uh, is a very good formation for that. Uh, what I would have loved is having Iguain in the middle because he's the one who can attract Koulibaly. That's an amazing clash always, so that gives some room to Cristiano Ronaldo. But I'm hoping Dybala can play the same role. Okay. Uh, but yes, this, this formation works uh, because you're going to have Douglas Costa, as you said, Cristiano Ronaldo as well from the other side. Sometimes Dybala goes on the left and also tries to create some some spaces. Yes. If Quadrado, some, Quadrado not, on Insigne, is that something that you, you agree with? No, I would take Danilo. Okay, so the man, so you would change only Danilo and actually copy exactly the one versus Milan? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or, yeah, for now, yes. And then Kedira would come in because then he's good at penetrating in the second half. But I wouldn't change, like make the three changes at the same time. <laughs> That's for yeah, sure. I understand the one. That was a risky one. Uh, before asking you the man of the match and the, and the prediction you have for that one, uh, I will I will disagree with you. And uh, uh, Mo, uh, for me, I have another formation in mind. So I will show again uh, the formation. And I, I believe we have to play with Danilo instead of Cuadrado, so that we agree there. But my shocking part is actually that I would play Bentancur as a regista, so okay. instead of Pjanic, and Kedira instead of uh, Bentancur, you know, as a right midfielder. So we have uh, Danilo in the back with De Ligt, Bonucci, Alexandro. In the middle, Bentancur, regista on the right, Kedira on the left, Matuidi. And then in the front, I would play Cuadrado instead of Douglas Costa to start with, with Dybala and Ronaldo in the same position as you show now. Why? I explain you also why. I would do that because, actually, uh, Danilo is more defensive. And that we already spoke. And versus yeah. a player like uh, Insigne, it's really important to have one that can keep uh, uh, this. We have Kedira. He's the, he's the man that can... He makes no difference in the second half, okay? He's a man, he has to start, he has to, you know, be there and he can enter easily, you know, up front. Quadrado having him there up front, he can easily in defensive style become a 4-4-2 because he comes back and then you have really a more defensive style to to, to actually block the counter-attacks because Quadrado, we know, he can also give a support in defense. Yeah. And that's how I would start, where the changes would be Douglas Costa in the second half, because mm -hmm. he can, when the players of Napoli, like Koulibaly, who is a bit more bigger and not 100% in shape, I believe Douglas Costa can really be really dangerous in the second half. And then you change, if you win 1-0 at the time, I would enter Pjanic for Kedira with Bentancur again as a Mezzala. So that's what I would do. I'm not El Tactico, you are, but that was an idea I had. Am I crazy, Mo, or there is sense in what I'm saying? Oh, there is sense. Uh, the, I agree with a, a lot of what you're saying, but uh, for me, Kadira would be better in second half when they're tired. Because uh, first half, they're going to be ready, and they're going to start blocking, and they're going to be sitting in the back. But second half... This is where things will open up a bit, and this is where you introduce Kadira, someone who doesn't run a lot, but when he does for like 30 minutes, he, he, he positioned himself really well, and this is when you need him. So that's the only difference, the biggest difference that uh, I would do. Thank you. I have, yeah. a, I have a message. So guys, if you're watching the show, Put your predictions uh, in the comments. That would be amazing that we know what you are thinking of the game. Uh, will we win? Will we lose? How many will we go to the 
penalty kicks, we know that we have no extra time. So, Mo, yeah. will we win? Will we lose? Will we have penalty kicks? And what's your prediction? Tell me. We will win. Uh, we will win 3-1. And Cristiano will be the man of the match because of all the criticism he received. Ronaldo, he, he loves criticism, eh? because not that he loves it, but that gives him a, a big ultra boost. So I, I would not be uh, surprised if you're right on that one. Yeah. Thank you, Mo. Thanks for your uh, tactics. I really love that episode. So guys, if you are loving also that episode and you want Mo to come back for every game, Let us know in the comments. We love your feedback. Thank you. Subscribe. Share your channel with the English-speaking community. Would be amazing. Thanks. Forza Juve. Ciao, Mo. Ciao.